definitely something. Yeah. yeah, but the flowers aren't here, but they are. We saw it later, uh, yesterday and the day before down the road. So do you ever use flowers? the flowers? Hmm? Do you use the flowers for anything? No. Why? Yeah, you can. They're kind of edible. Like I sucked the honey that, out uh, of them. Yeah, yeah. People say that the berries are poisonous so to varying degrees in different types okay. of plants, but um, you can use the petals for. Okay. Drinks and things is really nice. And you've okay. loads of nettles as well, I see. Siobhan, what would you do with nettles now? So, I mean, because we have loads of them, right? What would you do with nettles? <laughs> um, obviously the nettle soup is an old favourite. Um, but I just pinched the tops off just to use the top two leaves. In fact, this one's starting to flower now, I think, so it might oh, be a little late. Some of them are starting to flower, and then I wouldn't really touch them. Why, but just, why, why wouldn't you um, use them when you're, if they're starting to flower? The plant does change when it starts to flower and the toxins build up in the leaves, so they're not quite as good to eat. Okay. Um, but I just pinched the top two leaves off there, and you can see if you pinch them firmly, there's no sting at all. Oh, and okay. um, they say grasp the nettle. Yeah, just grasp the yeah, nettle, yeah, and it won't, exactly. It won't hurt you. Just blanch them in boiling water and removes the sting. Then you can use them for anything. I made a nettle gnocchi, which was nice. Um, or pesto tea, obviously. Lovely. It's an Lovely. easy one. I look forward to it. But it's very popular. I can't imagine eating them raw now. And then, you know, there's a mix of sauce with this These love this. The bees love it. Yeah, I, I was um, in a secret road yesterday, you know, one of these old like famine roads, mm. and this is growing all the way along, and it was covered in bees. Maybe it's too early in it's the morning. It's comfort, to, isn't it? Yeah, to um, for the bees to all be out now, but they were descending on it. It, it was covered with them. Yeah, bumblebees. Fabulous. There's some sort of a creature in one of them there. But Someone was bumblebees. telling me this. Uh, another name for this was Nitwell. What is it? Knit well because it's so good at um, oh, for healing. cuts and grazes. For healing. Yeah, for healing. That's it. Yeah. So you take the leaves, the comfy leaves, yes. and I think you can you can mash them all up. Yeah, and then you can put them. Into I've used it before. I mean, I would put that into a, like a vat of water and uh, just leave it steep. It stinks mm -hmm. like for a finish. It's but then you can use it as a liquid um, fertilizer for your for your plants. Okay, yeah. I've heard of it being used as a green manure. No, oh. I did a course once. Um, you know, this, this is one of my favourite ones. Yeah, what do you call that now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the kids, and the kids love it as well. Sticky weed or cleavers. Exactly. Stickleback. So stick, stickleback, goose exactly. Yeah. Oh, goosegrass, that's yeah. it as well. So, again, so what would you, would you use this for anything? Yeah, um, a spring tonic maybe is the simplest thing. Just steep it in water, cold water, put it in the fridge at night and then strain it. And it's a lovely, refreshing drink. It's kind of like cucumber or. Um, Almost okay. minty and cucumber in, yeah. Okay. Like, almost like a melon flavour. Try that Just now. a really subtle flavour, but I haven't tried that. More now. interesting than water. But my children and animals do come in, kind of yeah. rolling or you know, stuff. Yeah. You just <laughs> After rolling and stuff to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can make an ointment with this as well. Oh, so really? like a yeah, cleaver's ointment. Um, I went to this course, this herbalist course in the burn once. And um, again, I think it's like it's again it's kind of that he those healing properties from cleavers. Okay. So you think things. Don't have use and that they're I annoying. I did not know that. There you go now. So this is the horsetail Paris Cheval. This is amazing. Can <laughs> you see why? Oh it is like gosh. everywhere and it's kind of fairly obvious. Well the name of the plant is Equinus something or other and maybe that's why the that's where the horse yeah. it comes from. But to be honest, it actually do you know, look in fairness. <laughs> I see looks, what you mean. You see what I mean, right? These were around the same time as the dinosaurs. They're a very ancient, ancient plant. And, and do you use the stem as well as the yeah, uh, leaves I, when you make this? Yeah, I would. I know. In fairness, maybe I'm thing. maybe I'm making it wrong, but I would actually take take the whole thing and put it into a cafetiere, hot water, leave it steep for a little while, and then drink the tea. Wow. And there you go. So after that, perfect meal is perfect. I can't here. wait to try that. <laughs> so we should pick some of this, maybe. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Do you just take the break off? Um, I would just break off like this, yeah. I would just break off a few like that. Yep. Around this time of year, around the beginning of the summer, the new leaves mm. are so nice to pick and use in blackberry tea. And they have the really fruity taste of blackberries, but a really green Mm. pungenty kind of grassy as well so I, I pick them every year and then I dry them and it gives me like a year's worth of so you dry them tea. and keep them but you could use them fresh as well 
Yes, use them fresh, or you know, if you want to preserve them. Okay. Just dry them on a tea towel for okay. a couple of days. Because brambles, honest to God, they almost grow while you're looking at them at the moment. Yeah, they're, they're, they're never going to be scarce. No. So. No. Yeah, I brought you some tea. Actually, remind me before I leave. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thank you. I'd grown up in West Cork and gone to primary school there with my parents in the 80s and then we moved back to London for work and I always thought I'd like to live back in Ireland again and I lived in Lismore in County Waterford for a couple of years and fell in love with that and I wanted to see Clare, I'd never been to Clare before and I visited it and fell in love with it and stayed <laughs> really um, we're having no prior connection to the place or anything um, any real reason to, to visit it just kind of captured my imagination. Really different to anything I'd kind of experienced before. Will we give these a little rinse in the water? Your lovely beetroot leaves yes. and chard. Yep. It's lovely garlic, is it? A, um... It's elephant garlic. Oh wow. Yeah, and I got okay. it from seed from seed savers, about five of them, oh, about six or seven years ago I'd say. And I just keep saving keep the seeds going. and then they just Brilliant. keep growing it. There's a lovely pink colour to it. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine once the ends yeah. of it. And then we'll peel, peel the outside leaves off. Have you always grown your own vegetables? Yeah, I yeah. kind of started about, oh, when I started to train as a yoga teacher, so like 18 years ago now. Oh well. The centre that I was associated with in Nathan Roy, they had a lot of land and I was living in Galway. And uh, they loved me to take a corner of it. And I did an organic veggie growing course in Galway. Okay. And then I wow. grew, grew a few veg there and that's where it started out. It's a lovely thing to be able to do. It is, because you know, it's about it's about nourishment. And when you eat fresh food like this, you actually feel like you're you're healing your body, you yeah. know, just by eating. Like we're so far removed from you know, a lot of processed food. Yeah. We're so far removed from fresh food. Um there's something very special, like I mean, you know, with yoga there's you know, the idea of prana, our energy in our body, mm. but there's also the idea of prana in what we eat. So the fresher it is, the more energy, the more prana you're taking into your body. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Um, it's lovely to see the cycle from beginning to end, though, of planting your own things yeah. and watching them grow and being able to harvest them yourself. That's so much different to, um, you know, going to the supermarket and getting it. It's just what I like about yeah, foraging, although I'm and reaping what I didn't sow, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's when you're watching things plentiful. grow, yeah, throughout the season, yeah, yeah for sure. This is lovely smelling garlic. I can smell it from here. <laughs> I love the chicken in the background. So just roughly chopping some of your lovely um, beetroot and chard leaves just to stir into the soup at the end. Now this is a really hot chilli so I'm just going to use a tiny bit of it. And as we cook it, it will mellow out a little bit So anyway. that's what kind of gives the kind of vegan, like people think of vegan and vegetarian food as being boring like, but like yeah. it's absolutely not. Um, it doesn't have to be at all, um, it can get that reputation, but like anything you have to pack the flavours in when you're cooking meat or when you're cooking vegetables mm. or both, um, you have to layer the flavours so make them work for you you know so you add kind of nice bit of chili and i heard you talking about limes and you give something you give it a bit of oomph like to yeah you have to hmm. you have to put flavors in and when mm. you're using fresh ingredients that's easy to do and i brought some special salt to use which i made last summer with marigold petals and it's salt um that keith made in from the, the ocean here. ocean yeah no way so it's yeah. loophead salt yeah it's it's homemade salt with marigold petals and oh my gosh i'm gonna have to take a little actually. teaspoon of that for inside is, you can smell this one awesome. it's lovely yeah. kind it's of nice. um yeah kind of spicy yeah. kind of yeah mm. the marigold is kind of 
peppery almost mm. and yeah almost spicy lovely so, yeah that's all and i brought garlic but i'm not going to use it because we have your lovely garlic so that's Good. all we need it's about making it easy isn't it it's about making it yeah, easy it yeah, is for me at yeah, least yeah. <laughs> yeah i like things to be easy and simple so we cook it up let's do it we fried off the tagliatelle just broken into little chunks fried it off added the chili garlic and then the vegetable stock salt and pepper and chucked in a handful of peas and a can of butter beans and then at the last minute we added the lovely spinach uh, not spinach chard and beetroot leaves just the leaves and uh, just wait for the basically as soon as the tagliatelle is cooked the whole thing is ready that's five or ten minutes five or ten minutes Probably just enough time for the um, pasta to cook through, really. <laughs> you break yourself there. I'd say that's ready. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. magic. I'm as messy as you are. <laughs> Excellent, I'm so no, glad I'm no. someone as messy as I am. <laughs> I doubt oh it. Oh my then. god, look at that. Well, what's an offer? Minestrone. Well, we have, yeah, vegan minestrone. minestrone soup I'll get you a spoon. Yeah. Lemon and chilli, so I hope you like chilli. <laughs> I hope it's not I do. too hot. Well, it depends. <laughs> Let's see. This is where you have to pretend it's yeah, lovely. Yeah, just smile anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. With a little bit of chilli, are you alright? There's a little chilli, yeah. <laughs> too Whoa. much. With that warm No, I like, I like this. I don't like creamy soups, you know. Okay. I like I come from a tradition of uh, no, 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 carry on. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> What can I say? Good. Good, good. Can I eat the rest of it now, yeah? So Siobhan, when I've been running around the place, standing a lot in the garden, I try and find a bit of time, say in the afternoon, so you could lie like this, settle yourself and you know, have a nice kind of body scan, you know, absolutely comfortable for you. Thank you. Okay. Well, try it. Yeah. So you just allow yourself to settle your awareness to your feet and you just feel the feet. And the legs. Throat. Chest. In the belly area. And when the hands go back, you can just take the eye pillow off your face. It's so comfortable with the eye pillow blocking out any any, any light, light and I don't know. It's kind of and it's the weight as well of the eye pillow. Yeah, just it's that extra really kind of ease, you know. And having the cushion under the legs is really comfortable. 